Hey there, it's Michael J. I'm going to show you a recording of a play I wrote called Three Women, which was presented during the Strawberry One Act Theater Festival in 2006. And it was a finalist, and in fact, it ended up in this anthology, Best Plays of the Strawberry One Act Theater Festival, Volume 3. You can get it on Amazon. And, um, I wrote this play about three women because I was working with a theater company and we were filling out grant information and the grant people were dismayed that we didn't have enough women or, or minorities involved in our theater company. And so I thought, okay, I'll show you. I'm going to write a play about three women, so there were all women in it, and they'll be of different ethnicities. So. At the time, I was reading a lot of Dorothy Parker for some reason, and I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll make Dorothy Parker a character and she could have a conversation with some other prominent female writers. And I thought of Lorraine Hansberry, Raisin in the Sun. And then I went looking for an Asian lady. And I thought, who is the most famous Asian writer, female, uh, known to us all? And I had to look into that because I didn't know. Um, I thought of Pearl S. Buck, but found out that she's not Asian. <laughs> so uh, the good earth was no good to me. But I found Maxine Hong Kingston. Turns out that's the person. And so I read her stuff. I listened and read interviews with her. And I thought she was perfect to have a conversation with Lorraine Hansberry and Dorothy Parker. None of these ladies had met each other before. Well, so the play you're about to see is the result of that. Now. I didn't actually do the play with that theater company, which was the First Hand Theater Project. Um, I ended up doing it for the Rion Theater in this festival, and it turned out marvelously. This is the whole thing. It's about 20 minutes long, and it's in two parts, so there is a link to the second part at the end of this video. Enjoy. But I can't remember when. Or black? Black. <laughs> I don't 
think you need to make a statement. <laughs> <laughs> I am an admirer of your play, A Raisin in the Sun. Thank you. And you're lucky they let you do the screenplay, too. Hollywood usually thinks they can do it better than you can. Hollywood seemed much worse than I imagined, but it was gratifying having a film made of my play. This way, so many more people can see it. The theater, unfortunately, has a limited audience, especially for black females. Well, you probably do. What I wouldn't give to have a hit Broadway play. My efforts in the theater never quite took off. I've had much more luck in Hollywood, even if I detest it. It must be easy for you. Well, I am a woman, too. Hollywood is a man's world, but in Hollywood you could have the most remarkable house. You could have a pool if you wish. I don't swear. <laughs> My goodness, you could have so many things. And you said to yourself while you were there, for heaven's sakes, I might as well live as good as I can while I have to be there. <laughs> I'm afraid my stint in Hollywood wasn't long enough for all of that. You're young yet. Well, it doesn't happen overnight. Besides, the studio system has fallen apart. They used to have us wrangled under contracts, writing whatever tripe they threw your way. But you had a steady paycheck. But you wrote a star is born. There must be room to blossom. Very rarely. It's just a soft racket, isn't it? The real writing is for the novel and the theater. I do not feel that I am participating in a soft racket when I am writing for the screen. And what the hell, by the way, is a hard racket? Nor do I want to be a part of any racket, hard or soft. I've never in my life been paid so much either. Well, why did I go to Hollywood? And why did you? And why does anybody? But I can look my god and my producer, whom I do not, as do many, confuse with each other in the face, <laughs> and say I earned every cent of it. And still you detest it. Well, it's against everything I stand for. What do you stand for? I stand for civil liberty, freedom of speech, Freedom of political voice, those sons of bitches in Washington trying to tell me I'm un-American just because I've donated to communist groups. Well, so what if I did? Well, in the 30s, it seemed like a good idea. <laughs> we had to just stir things up and scream, let's do something about something and get the hell out of the Depression. I didn't realize the Depression existed until I learned about it in school. My friends thought I was a rich girl, which I wasn't. My father was successful enough to be middle class by depression standards. Mm -hmm. And in Chicago, that was top of the heap compared to most black families. Oh, I'm really a New York girl at heart. Always have been. I'm a New York girl myself. I moved after I finished at the University of Wisconsin. Mm, I never went to college. I just started writing these funny little poems and stories. And in the crazy days of the 1920s, crazy people printed them. That was my start, writing humor for Vanity Fair and Vogue. Are you sure you have no idea why you're here? Yes. That's right. We're here. No. I wonder if we'll meet Miss Kingston at some point. Well, I imagine we will. There are three postcards. You showed up. What should we do now? We could bide our time with a little word game. How do you play? Well, one person thinks of a word, and the other has to use it in a sentence. Oh, then it should be a difficult word. Or an unusual word. You pick the first word. How about horticulture? Horticulture. All right. You can lead a whore to culture, but <laughs> <laughs> awaiting your arrival. Yes, it's nice to meet you, Miss Kingston. Uh, who are you? I don't believe I know you. No, we certainly don't know you. I was hoping you would tell me why I'm here. I'm not even sure how I got here. We were hoping you were our hostess. Well, we're out of place cards. Here's yours, Mrs. Kingston. I'm sorry, I don't know your names. Oh, yes, you haven't had a chance to read the place cards. I am Dorothy Parker, and this is... Lorraine Hansberry. 
How interesting, like the playwright. Yes. <laughs> Miss Hansberry is the playwright. But I don't understand. You don't mean the author of A Raisin and Sun. She's dead. I don't feel dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm astounded. And I am the actual Dorothy Parker. I'm not dead either. <laughs> Though I will be if they don't open the bar soon. Who's throwing this party anyway? <laughs> I have no idea. That's what we're all wondering. Would you like some tea, Mrs. Kingston? Please, call me Maxine. Maxine, please. Are you a writer too, Maxine? Yes. Oh, what have you written? Do we know any of your work? You probably have heard of my novel, The Woman Warrior. No, I can't say that I have. I'm not familiar with it. Do you write for the movies, too? No. No, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> they don't do Chinese writers. <laughs> they don't do Chinese anything in Hollywood except for Takeout and Charlie Chan. <laughs> and the best film about the Chinese was based on a white woman's book, Pearl F. Buck. And cast of white actors. I can see I'm going to become unpopular with you two pretty people. You see, silly Miss Parker, I do not practice racism. I married a Jewish man and I am black. You did? Well, it must be quite a lot to deal with at times. Well, I am rather forward-thinking myself. I am a Jewish woman and I married a white Christian homosexual. <laughs> that must be difficult at times. Oh, I put sex carefully away on the highest cupboard shelf in a box marked Winter Hearts, 1960. <laughs> and what about you, Maxine? Are you married to anybody strange? I am married to an American. Is he any particular color? <laughs> He's Caucasian. That's funny. What is? I was raised in a very Asian community in Stockton, California. Everyone <coughs> referred to Caucasians as Americans. What did that make you? Well, back then we thought that we were immigrants. But I wasn't. I was born in Stockton. Still, it was a sense of separation, and white people seem like the real Americans. I don't think that way anymore. You now consider yourself an American? Yes, I'm an American, but I am also Chinese. No. I'm an American, and I am also African. I'm an American, and I am also a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this must be a bad hallucination from a bad night at the 21 Club. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over the fact that you're sitting right here before me, Miss Hansberry. Why did you think I was dead and called me Lorraine? Lorraine, you died of cancer. It was very tragic as you were so young and had such promise. Well, she's not dead. She's right there. You've been reading the tabloids, haven't you, Max? <laughs> well, they must have claimed my death dozens of times. But you're dead, too. I'm sure that you're dead, too. Why would you just pretend, for the fun of it, that we're actually alive? Just for today. <laughs> what do you say, alive for a day? That's much more fun than a word game, I think. <laughs> Are there any cigarettes here? Well, I could use a cigarette. Um, I don't smoke. Oh, well, it's just as well we don't have any cigarettes. But we do have cookies. Did you read about our deaths in the tabloid, Maxine? Not exactly. It was on the news. It was common knowledge, I thought. You know, death is always an interesting topic. You know, speculating on what it would be like and everything. I've often wondered how long the human race will manage with the A-bombs and the Cold War. Oh, the human race will go on. How do you know? I'm not so sure it should go on. Perhaps evolution will create something else entirely. Human beings are unique in the universe. The only creatures that have the power to transform it. Man will do what the apes never will. Impose the reason for life on life. I wish to live because life has within it that which is good, that which is beautiful, and that which is love. Since I have been lucky enough to know all these things, I have found them reason enough, and I wish to live. Sometimes I wonder why I bother to keep going on. I've had my thoughts of suicide over you work and you work towards something. And what is it worth? There are always barriers. What about you, Maxine? Have you thought of ending it all? Suicide may be the purest act of revenge a woman can undertake.